Hello and welcome to Fluke Fridays. Um, happy Friday. It's almost the weekend. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, today what we're going to do is talk about Amprobe. Um, I've had one other video on Amprobe before where we talked about how Amprobe is owned by Fluke and they have a unique position for doing that. One of them is a value prop so we can hit lower price points with the Amprobe items. The other is though, and what we're going to focus on today, is the they make some unique tools that Fluke doesn't make in that brand, in our brand. And what are those? one of those tools? It is a wire tracer. So it's a huge asset to Fluke. We do have wire tracers, but they're in the Amprobe line. We're going to talk about the AT6000 series. So we're going to talk about the AT620, 630, and then we're going to jump back to the AT610. The 620 and 630, they both come with a hard case and they have similar features. We'll talk about those. And the AT610, has a different case, and I'll show that a little later in the video. Now, what comes with the AT630? We'll start with that, and then we'll go down from there. It comes with this hard case, like we already said. It comes with a transmitter, comes with a receiver. It also comes with an induction clamp and rechargeable batteries. What do you not get with the AT6020? You do not get the induction clamp, and you don't get rechargeable batteries. Other than that, you're gonna save some money if you go with the AT6020. You, all the features are the same on these with those. Later, when I'm in front of the breaker panel, I'll show what the difference between the 6020 and the 6010 as far as feature set is concerned. So the 6020, 6030 are the same feature set. 6010 is a little different, and you'll see that later at the breaker panel. I'll see you soon when I connect this uh, transmitter to an outlet so we can go track the breaker in my breaker panel. Okay, so we are down in my kitchen and we are gonna about to hook up this transmitter um, to an outlet. I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first thing I'll say is you wanna read the user manual, whether you have the AT6020 or 6030 or the 6010, which again comes in this canvas case. So that's your first look on that, at that canvas case and we'll look at that more later. But um, this is a really well done user manual. You don't have to read the whole thing, you know, most of it's in other languages, but it's really good. It's got all the different applications on how you're gonna hook this thing up. And this is where we're gonna try to find breakers. And you can see this little circle with a cross through it saying, don't hook up with the, li the live and the neutral together. Instead, they want you to hook up with the live and then go find a separate ground. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. You do get this adapter with AT6020 and 6030. Um, I have it in one of my other demos, so I'm not showing it today, but I got this thing plugged in. I've got the live red plugged in here. And you see the black, I'm just discarding that. I'm not using it, right? And then I've got the green for my connecting to my separate ground. And for me, um, in an industrial environment, you're gonna have an easier time finding the ground because there's I-beams and building metal and everything all over the place. But in the home, you get to go under my sink with me and we are going to, let me get a flashlight so you can see what I'm looking at. We are gonna hook up to that pipe back there and that'll give us a ground. Okay, now we got a ground and if we come back to here, let me show you what this looks like when you first turn it on. If you don't have the ground connected and you turn it on, going to look like this even though you're hooked to an energized circuit it doesn't it doesn't have the circuit completed so the moment you connect the ground now it says we are on energized this transmitter can transmit a signal on de-energized or energized circuits we are on an energized circuit today so that's what we've got going on now we see it's an energized circuit we're not transmitting yet if we hit this button we'll start transmitting okay and let's look at the AT 6010 transmitter and how those are different. You can see this one, when you turn it on, there's just an on button. There's not a high and low signal. So when you turn it on, it's transmitting at high, okay? So you see a little bit of the difference in the transmitter as well. When you get the AT6010, if I can get that to focus, 6010 versus the AT6020 and 30. Okay, now we're gonna go downstairs and use the receiver to um, track this thing. Okay, and welcome to my basement. So what we're gonna be talking about is the AT6010 versus the AT6020 or 6030. If we turn them both on, first thing you'll notice is 
and although it's he's harder to see in this environment um this well, let me turn these beeps off because you don't want to hear the beeps while i'm talking this is a monochrome screen it's got a backlight in it this is a color screen so you can see that that green um it's a much nicer screen although this does look nice on this uh video so uh it's got color screen and it's got multiple modes and you see the mode button this one doesn't have any mode button it just has the sensitivity range so let's get over there and i'll show you kind of what the different things are so we'll start with the at6020 and we'll kind of jump back and forth between the two so 6020 you can see it is an all or nothing and again i have the beep turned down so you don't have to hear that every time it beeps but you can see that red um, when I get a signal, it's an all or nothing, this first mode. And this is great if you've got multiple panels. You just want to come up to a panel and see, oh, is there a signal here? Let's see if I can get it to go off again. There we go. It was doing it for a second. There we go. Ah. But you can get it to go off even with the panel door shut a lot of times. I'm not saying it's always going to work, but a lot of times it will. But really hard to find the breaker because it lights up for the whole panel. Even if we reduce the sensitivity, it still lights up for a huge chunk. So then the next mode that we're typically going to do is going to be the traditional mode. And this mode is the same mode that you get with the AT6010. And this is the only mode you get with the AT6010 is this mode. Okay, I'm going to turn off the camera and try to get you guys a little closer. One sec. Okay, and then for this mode, this is going to show you where it's seen the strongest signal. So you can see, we see a pretty strong signal over there. Oh, let me turn the sensitivity to like where it would be. So you see it's like maxing out over here. If it's maxing out, we want to adjust that sensitivity so that we can see it move, okay? Oh, it's maxing out again. So we're gonna adjust sensitivity. We're gonna go down the way. Now we're gonna go up the other side. Um, and I haven't maxed out the sensitivity again. But now you can see I've got 70 here, 54. So I'm pretty sure it's this one, but sometimes it's really close between a couple. Um, and you can see I can get almost 74 up there. So if you're having a hard time figuring out what breaker it is and two are close or three are close, the next mode is what's really great. Again, everything I've done so far with this mode, you could do with the AT6010, but you don't get this as an option. This is why I really think most people will enjoy going up to the 6020 or the 6030. This is called breaker finding mode. And you see that green light or green arrow? When that green arrow turns on, it's saying I have a signal. This thing will auto adjust and only remember the strongest signal. So in this mode, you have to go around the whole thing once and then the second time, and we had several green arrows that time. Oh, we got a green arrow there again. Okay, let's go around again. We got a green arrow here. Okay, so we had two green arrows this time. So now we go back to here, got a green arrow. Go over here, can we get any green arrow? Oh, I got it for a second, okay. So now we can go back over here, go back and forth. Oh, I can still get it, but it should give you one being stronger than the other and you can see it is stronger down here and if i use my brain a little bit i know that i'm my outlet in the kitchen is not on a 60 amp breaker so down here there it is it's amp uh, breaker number 20 which i know is the right breaker for that outlet so i hope this is helpful oh and the last mode is a non-contact voltage mode and that's just saying you've got oh you can't see that down there you've got voltage. So if I make the sensitivity more, we can say, oh yeah, we have, this is an energized circuit. Okay. Um, so it's just like a volt pin that you'd have in your pocket. That's going to be it for down here. I might have a conclusion upstairs. I might not, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and Okay, there and back again, just like Bilbo Baggins. We went on an adventure today. Oh, well, sorry about bumping the table. We did go on an adventure today, a little field trip to the basement and found a breaker. Um, what we did is we looked over the AT6000 series. Now, I will say this, there's been a multiple series of uh, wire tracers from the, flute, from the Amprobe lineup over the years. The AT6000 series 
is by far my best that I've used. I have not gotten my hands on an AT8000 series, but I hear it's based on the same architecture as the 6000. So I would expect that you're gonna have similar results with the 8000 series with a couple more features. But in review, the case you get with the AT6010, the lowest price point wire tracer um, on the market um, from Amprobe is this case. You get uh, the monochrome screen, right? Um, versus the color screen in the AT6020 um, and 6030. You, the case that you get for the AT6020 and 6030 is this one. It's a nice hard case. Um, will protect the stuff better, but comes at a little bit higher price tag. So leave your comments below if you have experience using the AT6000 series and if you've had success or failures, leave them below and let us know about them. I will say this, all wire tra tracers, just as a disclaimer, can be fooled. They're not infallible. They're not like multimeters where you plug them into the outlet and you always get a number. There's as much art as there is science when using these, and the better you are as a user and the more experience you have, the better results you're gonna get. But if you do follow the user manual, use the AT6000 series. I've found in multiple industrial plants, the majority of the time I can find the breakers, even in these crazy plants. So I hope you can too, and let us know about your successes and failures in the comments below. Have a great weekend.